Hey guys, had one of those moments tonight. Sometimes I have the moments where I feel like I'm gonna make a post about it. And there's other times, which is more than not actually, where I have these moments and I'm like, I need to make a video and I need to post it, but I don't do it. And tonight it struck me kind of a little hard that every time I don't do that, it's me showing a lack of faith in God. It's by me saying, oh, I'm not good enough to say anything. Who am I to say that? I'm not a pastor. I haven't been to theology school. I'm none of that. But every time I let those doubts come into my head and I don't do it, it's me telling God no. It's me telling God that I don't have faith in him. So here we are. And as I was on my walk tonight, I wasn't really doing anything. I was just in silence and that does not happen very often. Usually I use these moments to go in prayer to God and I use this 15, 20 minutes that I have just out there with no, no distractions and I just talk to God about anything and everything. And it hit me tonight that I don't ever really just go to God just to say thank you. I might intend to, but I always end up asking for something in return. I never just have a conversation just to tell him how amazed I am by him and how grateful I am for him. I always ask for him to help me be better, help me to be stronger, be with my grandbabies and my kids ask for things. And I started thinking tonight, what else do I do this in? And I thought about my study today. I was studying through Rahab and then I switched over to Ruth. And what I realized is in each of those, when I went back and looked at my notes, it was about what type of woman was she? What attributes does she have that I need to emulate? What can I get from her story to apply to my life? And I all of a sudden felt guilty because I realized when I read the Bible, I read it so selfishly, just like my prayers. I go to scripture with good intentions, just like I go to prayers with good intentions. But somehow, I always bring it back to me. And who am I? I'm a nobody. And as I read through my studies today, and I was looking over these two ladies' lives, I tried to figure out how I can learn something to be better. But then I started thinking about I do that all the time. Like every study over this past year even, don't get me started on the last however many years, but just this year alone, I started going through my Rolodex of everything I've studied and all the books that I finished this year. And every single one of them are about me. How to be a Titus II woman. Proverbs 31. I'm reading through the women of the Bible. How I can be a better wife. I think I've written three books uh, that I've read through this year alone about how to be a better wife. <laughs> Self-help books, as you will. And when I got to thinking is, man, I'm doing this all wrong. It's not about me, yet I make everything about me. And I started feeling shame and guilt. And I started thinking to myself, what if I'm doing this all wrong? I can't be the only one. So as I sat there and started thinking some more, 
I started going through what I read earlier and decided that what if I go back through my lesson, reread it, but this time, instead of reading it to find something for me, what if I read it just to find God? And what I found was neither of those stories are about the women. If you really stop and look into scripture, it's all about God. But we're such weak humans. We are so selfish. That somehow we can take God's word and somehow make it all about us. And then I started to think about why do we do this? Even in church, our sermons are all about do this, do this, do this. This is how you apply it to your life. Here's a story to make it about how you can relate it to your life. We're doing it all wrong, guys. Scripture's not about us. It's not about how to relate it back to us and how we can grow from it. It's about getting to know God. You see, when you're in a relationship and you just start it, what do you do? You can't wait to talk to them. Ask them questions, open-ended questions, not yes or no's, but open-ended questions. You want to get to know them. What if we started thinking about our Bible like that? A relationship with God, and that's his way of talking to us. We say we do it, but do we actually believe it? Do we actually read scripture in that way? I can't be the only one doing it wrong. So as I read back through, I saw that it's not about the ladies. It was about God and how wonderful he is. And every time he was so faithful and good. And he comes through scripture with all of the things that we could ever want. We see how he protects his children, how he loves us even when we're broken, that he loves us and can use us for his good. It's not about how faithful they were. It's about God's faithfulness to us. You see, the scripture is what we say is God breathed. Every word in the Bible is his. And as we read scripture, if we look at it from a God perspective, and not the human perspective, what we find is that it's a love story to us from a God that loves us so much that he sent his son here to earth. Why? Because he wanted to be with us. We have a God that wants a relationship with us more than we could ever imagine. And every single story is a love story to us, not so that we can be better or that we can be good enough because we never will be. That's why Jesus was here. He wants to be with us, but there's nothing we could do to ever be good enough. So because he loves us so much, he came to the earth and he died for our sins so that we could be with him. And he left his Bible as a beautiful love note to us so that we could get to know him because he's not here anymore in a physical form to where we could sit at his feet and that we could listen to him talk to us and that where we could ask him questions. But he left his Bible so that we could see him in ways far better than we could have ever seen when he was here on earth even. But are you reading your Bible the right way? When you read your Bible, are you reading it just for knowledge so that you could have all the answers? Are you reading your Bible so that you can figure out how you can be better at something? Women, I know I can't be the only one always trying to figure out how to be a better wife and mother. It's hard. The Bible's not a self-help book, though. It's a letter from God expressing just how amazing he is and how much he loves us. And if we focus on reading scripture to search him out 
and not ourselves, what we'll find is naturally we'll become better and better. Why? Because we'll see just how great he is and how good he is and how much he loves us. And it'll make us want naturally to be a better person for him. Just like in our relationships, my married mamas, the more your husband lavers you up with sweet words and notes and kind things and helps you, what does it do? Your love grows more immensely for him. And if we read scripture in the same manner, what we'll find is we're naturally going to just fall into place with God. We won't have to try to figure out how to be better. We'll naturally be better because we'll want to. So I challenge you as I'm challenging myself for the next 30 days, I'm not going to pick up my Bible with a pen and paper just to seek out knowledge or self-help but just to find God in every verse. Will you join me in the next 30 days and let's see what it does in our lives if we just seek him with no desire of our own other than wanting just to get to know our Lord and Savior at a more intimate level. What's gonna change in our life? I'm excited to find out and I hope you are too.